welcome to Still Buffering, a sister's guide to teens through the ages. I am Riley Smurl. I'm Sydney McElroy. And I'm Taylor Smurl. Well, sisters, it's a dreary day outside. Is it? I haven't been outside. It's pr- I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Riley didn't have school today, so obviously. Woke up at 1230. <laughs> hmm. That must be nice. Yeah, it was. Because I wake up at six yeah. every other day. I've been at work for like six hours at that point. Well, Sydney, you're an adult. I'm a child. <laughs> Just saying, you know, mm-hmm. while you're in, uh, in bed asleep. Huh. I'm 16. Without saving lives. You want me to save lives at 16? I'm not Doogie Howser, Sydney. I, <laughs> I can't mean, just go out and work at a hospital. Why couldn't you be? I think I'm way past that point in my life where I could have been Doogie Howser. <laughs> I'm not going to end this conversation because I'm an adult and I slept in till 11. So Woo. that was my day. I did go to the <laughs> gym. Well, that was, uh, I saved my life a little bit. I think you two take the show from here and I'm going <laughs> to take a nap. <laughs> Sydney's the sleepiest girl in the world. Oh, why have I always, why have I always stuck with these sleepy, sleepy girls? I just, I'm coming off a long road of hospital service it's been a very long week justin and charlie have both been sick everyone in my house is snotty there's snot everywhere oh i'm in your house right now it's not everywhere i feel like it's everywhere because charlie will actually just come up to me and just like rub her nose against me in various Mm -hmm. places Mm -hmm. to wipe her nose (laughs) oh today we were pretending to be elmo and abby and she just came up to me and hugged me because I was Elmo and her nose was all up in my face. <laughs> she actually uh, rubbed her nose on my cheek yesterday. Cool. cool. She was drifting off to sleep and I was laying down with her and trying to get her to calm down. And she just like leaned over to me and just rubbed her snotty nose all over like to wipe her nose off on my face. <laughs> Perfect issue. Yeah, you're, you're gonna need to teach her that's socially unacceptable at some point. I get that it's cute now, but you know, you're do- doing that stuff in the fifth grade or as a you know 31 year old woman, it, people don't appreciate it. I've learned recently. And recently, <laughs> you <heard? laughs> just teach her that lesson. <laughs> Unless you find just just the right person who does. <laughs> No, no, never. I don't care how much I love somebody. If they rub this naughty nose on me, deal breaker. I don't think I have to say that. You never have to say those certain deal breakers, but that's one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's that's a good one. Nope. Uh, to be fair, Justin did not rub his snotty nose on me at any point. I mean, that's good. Yeah. No, he did. He did talk a lot. I don't want to say I don't want to say whine about being sick because that's mean. So I'll just say he, he talk, complained. He talked a lot about it. <laughs> he mentioned he was sick with frequency. Mm-hmm. It was it was um, it was a very long day. Mm-hmm. <laughs> anyway, wow. hey, you know what can make you have a runny nose and what um, make you feel like you've got a cold? The cold. The cold, <laughs> the snow. <laughs> it- oh, the cold never Sorry. bothered me anyway. Uh, uh-huh. Just, just let it go, Sid. What's our topic? Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> let it go. Let it go. This transition is really awkward. <laughs> Neither of you could take it just as <laughs> once. <laughs> I think this has just become a theme. We just watch you try horribly and then make fun of you for it. And this we'll is, just keep going. Oh, is this not a shtick? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's it's not snowing today, but it <laughs> it could be. It has it. been. It could be somewhere. It's January. It snows in January often. It snowed like two weeks ago. There you go. Is it snowing there, Taylor? Uh, it snowed Saturday. So see, snow. <laughs> are you are you gathering proof that this happened? <laughs> I'm looking for yes. support. That snow. snow happens. Yes, snow happens. I think now, we can all agree on this fact. <laughs> I don't know if you know this, Riley, but when we were cool teens, we also had snow. Uh, from what I understand, you still do. <laughs> really? Sydney has proved. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, snow isn't a new thing. No. 
What do you, I always what do you thought kids... life was so different back then. <laughs> Turns out we're not that different at all. <laughs> we have more in common than we do different. What uh, Like snow. What cool names do you have for snow now? Names? <laughs> what are the, What's all the cool slang? Snow. You don't... You don't have any cool slang for I snow? Wa- come up with some cool slang for snow for me. Uh, powder. Powder. Let's see. Go, Wait, go. Isn't that an, I was going to say powder, but uh, isn't that a drug slang? Ooh, I think that's drugs. <laughs> no, no. Like if you're going to go like snowboarding because cool people snowboard. And you go like, I'm going to go whip some wicked powder. I'm going to look up slang for snow. <laughs> and that, what you talk, yeah. Um, get get some, some good, good powder cutting. <laughs> no, that's not like, no. like drugs. <laughs> that's definitely a drug, a drug slang. Powder cutting. How, uh, uh, what else is? So, I don't know. What, maybe if you just say like snizzo. Snizzow. Snizzow. Let's go sledding in the snizzow. <laughs> 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 no, you just sound like an alien that came to Earth and doesn't correctly know how to pronounce the English language, but you're trying to fit in with the children that you want to abduct. Do you That's what that know sounds some, like. Some for snow? Let, let's go hang in the cold stuff. I've heard that before. Do you all want to know some? Yeah. Uh, champagne powder is super light, fluffy powder common in Utah and Colorado. What? Champagne powder? Concrete is deep snow that is so heavy it basically makes a wall when you try to ride through it. Okay, uh, so wait, these are these are slangs from like is this like snow like going on a 39, snowmobile? 39 words, 39 <laughs> words for snow. Okay. Okay. Um Man, champagne powder would be a good drag name. Somebody out there. Use <laughs> <Who's> that. <laughs> uh, corduroy is perfectly groomed snow with ridges intact from being groomed. Who grooms their snow? Groomers. <laughs> uh, groomers. Snow groomers. Refer to a type of trail that is well maintained. The snow is lined with ridges from the groomer and generally very smooth and easy to ride. This okay. This is for people who are doing some sort of winter sport. Uh, hero snow is powder that is so deep you feel like you can try any trick, go as fast as you want, and you'll never get injured. Hero snow. That sounds like horrible decision snow. <laughs> And there's also one called uh, mashed It's hold my beer snow. <laughs> mashed potatoes is not snow. Do not be confused. <laughs> you eat these. The they're, deeper they're it gets, yummy. the slower you go. If you dive into mashed potatoes, you may get burns because they're hot. Not if they're outside in the snow. But what they're if they're cold? <laughs> what if it's snowed mashed potatoes? Guys, what, what? are we doing? <laughs> <laughs> I like mashed potatoes. <laughs> so hey so there are some cool slang words for snow now you <laughs> snow <laughs> thanks for listening <laughs> have fun out there in the mashed potatoes <laughs> go go sip some champagne powder have, have you have you ever called snow that with no. your friends riley no <laughs> will you please try to get please try to get champagne powder started please try to make that a thing i'm gonna have my friends over next time it snows and look out the window and just be like check out all that champagne powder <laughs> <laughs> you'll be the coolest and then i'll just tell them the reason i had you come here was to make that joke you all can leave now uh-huh. <laughs> i'm done with you i'm done please depart I have Netflixing. The exit is that way. <laughs> I'm Netflixing to attend to. Uh, so the I think the best part about snow when I was younger was the snow day mm-hmm. for me, which of course is the day where they canceled the school. Yes. For the yes. Snow. You guys think I feel like Starfire? You guys Teen think... Titans? The way I'm talking. Yeah. The snow day. Uh. <laughs> Do you guys think there are people that have never had a snow day before because of where they live? Maybe. Probably. Well, I'm sure two options. One, people who live places where it never snows, obviously. Don't. Don't. (laughs) I Um, bet people in Hawaii have never had a snow day. Probably. Yeah. That's crazy. And and the other thing is, I, I know that the further north you live, the more accustomed you are to snow. Mm -hmm. So the, you'll probably have snow days, but many fewer. Yes. Than maybe here. And we're in our part of the country where 
yes, we get snow, but not often enough to ever be prepared for it. Mm-hmm. Every time it snows, it's, <laughs> it's like total like, oh no, what do they we pre- do? They predicted like one to three inches of snow. And I went to the store just to pick up like some batteries. And there were like people buying cartons of <laughs> cases of water and, and batteries and bread. All the bread, bread, all the water and all the milk. Because that's what you want. When this, well, no. yeah, who are these people making bread milk stew when it snows outside? <laughs> What's going on? I think milk would be a thing you wouldn't want to have if it's going to snow and your power is going to go out. And you just have like you're stanky gonna drink milk. some water and eat some milk sandwiches <laughs> so, i really uh, I, I enjoy anytime any sort of natural disaster that heads for new york city you go to the stores no one's really in line for the food but man the liquor stores are packed it's just like oh no we're <laughs> stuck inside let's have a party wait to stock up <laughs> quick quick <laughs> um no, but the nice thing is, riley to answer your question about the milk if the power goes out you just put it out in the snow but then it freezes. Milkshake. <laughs> right? That's basically what a milkshake is. No. 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 Okay. I mean, no. Close enough. You can make snow cream. Yeah. I've never done that. I've, you just I, mix snow with, like, milk, right? I see that. It's like a meme. It's like a thing. Everybody on Facebook's making snow cream, and they're claiming it to be a regional thing, no matter what region of the country they live in. They're like, <laughs> this is a... West Virginia tradition. This is a Utah tradition. This is a Massachusetts tradition. Everybody, it's. it's I, I think snow cream is just everywhere, guys. But yeah. so you just you just take dirty snow and you mix it with some cream and then you eat it. I think you mix yep. it with like heavy cream and vanilla or something. Mm-hmm. Something like that. I've, I've never done it because I think snow's dirty. Because <laughs> snow's like dirty, well, yeah. That's we were some some people at work the other day after it snowed brought in a bunch of snow and we're like, hey, do something mixological with this behind the bar. And I'm like, no, it's dirty snow. It's not for consumption. Especially here when sometimes people freak out. We get a very very light coating and they cancel school, so the snow is still kind of like in the grass and not like making its own layer. So you're just kind of digging the snow out from the grass. It's like no, that's dirt. Yeah, let's not. No, no but. But um, what is nice is because we are not completely prepared for snow, we, when we were teenagers, enjoyed some, some snow days. Mm-hmm. Mm. Uh, now, my question is, we, we've all done the thing, and probably a lot of people can connect to this, of watching the local news mm-hmm. the night before you know a big snow's coming or a big snow has started, like waiting for your county to scroll past the bottom. Mm-hmm. And they do them in alphabetical order in the counter, county we live in. And there are like 55 in West Fif- Virginia. Yeah, 55. So there's lots of counties in the state. Mm-hmm. And and ours is, starts with a C. So it's really early. So once you've gotten past it, you got to watch all the way through. Yep. The end. Anyway, it's like excruciating, waiting as the list gets bigger and bigger, waiting for your county to be listed as like, and, no school tomorrow. And I will say, I don't know if this was the same when you all were my age, but our county is uh, notorious for not making the decision until three or four in the morning. Oh, yeah. So yeah. we get the call, like we'll go to bed thinking we have a full day of school or you're just like me and you're like, no, there's no way we're having school tomorrow. I'm going to stay up late. There's no way. Every When I say every other county two weeks ago every other county in the entire state was closed and we didn't even have a delay it was like there's no way we're having school tomorrow so i stayed up late and then we got a call at three in the morning that just said we were having a delay (laughs) um now my question is if you haven't figured out the night before like if there's not enough snow that they're they're willing to call it back in the day they didn't call us i know now you get automated calls Mm -hmm. right Mm -hmm. that was not a thing uh, so you had to either watch TV or I remember mom and dad listening to the radio. Oh, my gosh. Yep. You could also call. There was a number you could call that would read a recording. Yes, we would listen to it over and yep. over. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I get notifications from the Twitter page in West Virginia that tweets out all the snow in all the counties. So I have their notifications turned on. So whenever they tweet about a county being closed, I'll get the notification. Mm -hmm. Um, You can sign up for them to text you when your county is closed or on a delay. That's nice. And we also get a call. Wow. No, we had to we had to wait for the radio to tell us or the local news. And my question is, if school is canceled, uh, usually mom and dad would know before us. And so they have this piece of information. We are still asleep. Did you prefer? For mom and dad and Riley, you now to wake mm-hmm. you up at whenever you get up for school and say like, hey, no school today. Go back to sleep. 
or just let you sleep through so that you wake up and go, oh my gosh, I, <gasps> no school. It's That's 11.30. what you would say? Oh my gosh, I, <gasps> no school. Well, yeah, because there's always that moment at first where you think, I overslept. And then you rush to get dressed and like there's a test going on and like you're throwing on the wrong clothes and you run to school. There's and like a test you run going in. on? Hmm. But, you know that nightmare? No. <laughs> Never had that nightmare? No. I've had a nightmare that someone throws me out on a stage telling me I play a part that I don't know the lines to. Well, yeah. Okay. Well. <laughs> well, to, to <laughs> answer. What do you prefer? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I... I don't think that for me, there is, I think if I could find a feeling in my life that replicates that emotion that you get when you're woken up and you're told that you don't have school and you get to go back to sleep, when you are just trying to fall back asleep, just so content that when you wake up, you get the whole day and now you get to sleep more. There is no better feeling that I have encountered in my life than that feeling of going back to sleep under that circumstance. That is very true. I agree. I, that was always my preference. I used to tell mom, please wake me up and tell me just, <laughs> and I would say just so that I'll know, just so that, you know, I'll know what's going on. But really it was for that moment where you go, I have to, <gasps> oh, sleep. Well, this is the most peaceful feeling in the world. Somewhat mimicked when you wake up before your alarm and you think you're late and then you realize you have two hours to sleep. But mm -hmm. the snow day version is the ultimate version. Yeah, that's a great, that's like the evolved ultimate. <laughs> yeah, that, I, I, I thought that would be the consensus. I always think that's more wonderful. Yeah. yeah. Especially since uh, that same day I was talking about, or he had a delay, I assumed they were going to cancel school, and Dad said, well, I just won't wake you up in the morning. And I wanted to say, just wake me up and tell me we don't have school. But I heard the call in the middle of the night, and I thought that call was one that said, uh, schools are operating on a code red. That means no school. But no, I was woken up at eight thinking that that meant it was light outside. So I didn't have school, but no, I was woken up at eight to get ready for school. I know. And that's always a bummer because then it's like the worst of both worlds. If it snowed, but not enough that you got to miss school. What it means is now you, especially as I got older, you have to drive to school in the snow mm -hmm. and that's scary. Mm -hmm. And yeah. also... Uh, it's really cold outside. And if there's one thing I know about teenagers, they hate coats. Yep. I hate coats. <laughs> teenagers <laughs> hate weather appropriate clothing. I this own one coat and I bought a jacket for the first time two days ago. There's a, a funny bell curve in life to how you how you respond to warm clothing. Because when you're a kid, it's like your parents are dressing you and you're just a little bundled warm thing. And then it's like as you come into your own in your teen years... I, I was like, no, I don't want to wear any of these practical clothes. I want to look cute. And that will last into your 20s. And then towards the end of your 20s, you just start dipping off. And then you just go straight down real hard. Like, no, no, no. 20 layers, please. <laughs> 10 hats. These ugly boots. I don't care. These gloves don't match. Who's judging me? I don't care. <laughs> I really, I, I do. When I go outside in the snow now, which I only do for Charlie's sake, I would never do voluntarily. Um, when I do that, I, I look like, like maybe I was trying to travel light, like on an airplane, like not <laughs> up in my suitcase. So I just wore all the clothes I wanted to bring. Cause I just put on like whatever's laying around, like on top of each other. So like, yeah. here's another t-shirt and then there's something long sleeve. I'll put on a couple of sweatshirts. I don't know. I'm wearing my pajama pants. Can I get my jeans on over them? <laughs> I just start sliding on more clothes until like, that seems like a thick enough. Put on a couple pairs of socks over those. That'll work. This is good. What, Riley, would you compare this to when Joey puts all of Chandler's clothes on for revenge and friends? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> That is Sydney Snow Day attire. Every piece of clothing she owns. That's essentially it. That's, that's, yeah. I bet he was very warm. I bet he was. You see all those ties he had on? I bet his neck was warm. Yeah. I, I, I am very warm when I go out now, which is a priority. When I was younger, I always wanted to look cute in yeah. snow clothes. And the thing is, there's a difference between like winter weather clothes, which you can look very, very cute in, mm -hmm. and snow clothes. Which that's a whole other. I don't even own snow clothes <laughs> anymore. You don't own snow clothes? I did when I was little. I had like you know the bibs and the, like the big marshmallow suit with like the thirty layers and the hat and the gloves and. 
Yeah. No, I don't own any of that anymore. I have ski pants somewhere. The slicky pants. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I uh, I used to have those because every snow day it was like, oh yeah, it's a snow day. I'm gonna go sledding. Yeah, this is great. And now it's like, Mm-mm-mm. I'm staying in bed all day. <laughs> See, when you're little, I mean, like when we were young, it, you didn't care. So there are lots of Taylor. I know you and I both had them. A lots of uh, pictures of us wearing like the giant um, poofy, like you said, overalls, like yeah. you know, overall things, and then um, puffy jackets. Especially back when we were young, if you could put fake jewels or like glitter puff paint, like not put them on there, but if they were on there, that was the coolest snow jacket you could wear. Mm. You sound so cool. <laughs> I had I had one that I remember that was like hot pink and black, and it had like fake like jewels all over the back of it in a pattern. It had like <laughs> big plastic fake oh, gosh, I remember that. And, yeah. and blue gems, I, sapphires, like all these different like fake jewels all over. Do you remember that? That was, yeah, that was a, that was something to behold. If you had that now, you could probably <laughs> actually make a good penny off of it. I remember yeah. I was jealous because I had a friend who had this really pretty blue quilted one that had a bunch of like, jewels and flower print all over the back of it like roses cool. and jewels and that was very cool yeah back then. was it i hmm. yeah i was i'm not making this up this was cool uh, not so much in your teen years these were cool no. in like elementary school oh, okay no in my teen years i did the thing and riley you can tell me if it's different now but if i was actually going to go out in the snow when i was a teenager i wore jeans as if that's a thing you should do as if yeah. you should like and I don't mean just walk around. Like, of course, you can wear jeans if you're just going to be outside when it's snowing. But if you're going to go sledding or try to, like, actually engage with snow. <laughs> engage with the snow. <laughs> jeans are not are not a good idea. No, I've done that before. I've worn, like, a pair of leggings under a pair of jeans thinking that, like, yep. that would keep my legs warm. No. And then I'm not just wearing a thin pair of leggings. No, that doesn't work. It just makes your butt wet. <laughs> yeah that's all that happens your jeans instantly get soaked through and now you are just carrying around like really cold wet denim on the lower half of your body <laughs> i i could not like i i've been in new york for like 13 years now and i keep thinking i'm gonna adjust to the horrible cold we have i i have never adjusted to cold cold has never been okay for me i i will always like I also, as we've established, cared way less about being a fashionable teen in my teen years. And so, the, the, well, I understand the teen need to look like you're never really, like, end anything. So, I'm in the snow, but I'm wearing, like, some jeans and, like, a sweatshirt or whatever. Or, like, I was like, no, 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 give me the snow pants. <laughs> like, give me the big jacket. Give me the ugly scarf. Like, I'm in the snow, but I'm not trying to like make it a thing. Like it's not a thing that I'm in the oh, snow. Oh, it's like, snow. There's, there's snow. snow there. Whatever. I'm just outside. I just happen to be in the snow. Okay, this isn't the uh, new thing. This is how I always look. What are you talking about? There's no snow anywhere. What are you talking about? <laughs> Like it's just true, right? You're like you go to a school dance, you're like, I'm here, I guess, because everyone's here. I don't want to be here. I just happen to wear this dress. Just happen to wear these jeans. Whatever. <laughs> it took me like no time to get ready. Like whatever. It's like no big deal. Whatever. It's like no. Um, what uh, what what is the cool fashion that you wear in the winter now? In the snow or in the winter? In the in the we'll say in the winter because I'm assuming it's, there is no cool fashion for the snow. No, right? there it's, never has it's been the a same cool thing. fashion for the snow. <laughs> it's the same thing. It's teenagers always wear, which is is totally inappropriate clothing that will get really wet and yeah. you'll be uncomfortable in, and you'll pretend you don't care. Yeah, um, I'd say winter clothing. Um, you know those shoes, mom and dad always made us used to wear in the snow that are, they called duck boots. Yeah, that like the rubber around the foot and the top like laces up. Mm -hmm. um those like cute duck boots are in now yeah um also scarves and um and beanies like little hats and uh you mean infinity scarves or any kind of scarf I what is infinity scarf, infinity right? scarf. And you don't know what that is I, no end the, no beginning. I kind of don't want to know because the concept sounds really exciting, but I'm hoping it actually this is lame. <laughs> it's like when you get it, instead of it being just like one long line of fabric, like a real scarf, it comes in a loop. So you just kind of like loop it around your neck twice. Oh, 
So it's a circle fabric. Yeah. Yeah. So like you don't have to wrap it around to try to make it a circle and it doesn't hang down or anything. It just comes as a circle. I That's got good. One, I, I got, got some... one as a free gift with an with some stuff I bought online and I cut it so that it would be a normal scarf. Why would you do that? <laughs> she destroyed infinity. <laughs> you did. You. you she said the time. I needed it for like another now purpose. Now that scarf has a finite <laughs> life. I didn't understand. It didn't. It wasn't working for what I needed it for. And so um, I, I like a finite scarf. <laughs> <laughs> I like my scarves to have defined beginnings and ends. Hmm. It's too confusing to me when they just keep going. Like, I can't figure out how to put it on. <laughs> Where's the front? <laughs> I was afraid it was a choking that? hazard. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you wrap it around too many times, like, definitely. But isn't that every <laughs> scarf? Like, you wrap it around your neck. Yeah, I this is so funny. It's a thing you might wrap around your neck. <laughs> like, we need a disclaimer. <laughs> like, especially, like, I was watching Gilmore Girls, and Lorelai often wears the really thin thin scarves that like the piece of fabric like not thin fabric but like not a wide scarf yeah so like it was like the width of a tie and she would just wrap it once around her neck and then let it hang like that like is choking you <laughs> like that's it's also that not effective for keeping your neck no warm. it's not keeping your neck very warm it just kind of looks like it'd be itchy and uncomfortable that's uh those were very popular for a while yeah the fashionable like scarves skinny scarves or like the sparkly scarves yeah sparkly scarves yeah they're like sparkly they were like sparkly ones that some of them were even kind of not not mesh but you know like a knitted kind of like they were mm-hmm. so thin like they wouldn't you no know, they w- they weren't doing anything they were fashion fashion scarves <laughs> fashion <laughs> scarves sure <laughs> i will say we've had this discussion before about dress codes and hats um i'm very disappointed that i can't wear a beanie to school and it's cold outside because sometimes when it's cold outside um i i don't know i just think it like it it well, keeps your head warm and it looks cute. I mean, you lose most of your heat through your head. It, it seems like that would just be practical. Yeah. Like, mm. I just want to, like, you know, curl my hair and wear a beanie on top could, and make it look all pretty, but I can't. Could you wear one of those big, thick, like, ski headbands? You know, the ones you could wear out in the snow that go around your head and cover your ears like earmuffs yeah. do, but they're headbandy kind of thing? Yeah, as long I guess as long as it's not a hat. Ooh, could you wear <laughs> earmuffs? <laughs> Can you wear fashionable earmuffs? Fashion like that girl muffs? from Scream Queens that wears yeah. earmuffs nonstop? Yeah. Why don't you make that happen? Or wear headphones. Okay, well, that's... Well, that's... Like, no, you couldn't do that's that. That's also against school rules. Really? Yeah, you can't have headphones in because then they think you're listening to music. Oh. There's. They made an announcement the but other day that they said you... if they see your headphones, they'll just take your headphones. They won't even take your phone. They'll just take your headphones. No, I mean like big ones. I don't mean earbuds. I mean like big headphones. Yeah, that's not a lot. It just so that's even general. more illegal. <laughs> more illegal. <laughs> but what if they're not plugged into anything? What if it's just for looks? Then what's the point? <laughs> I just. You, you I just really... want to. In, uh, I don't know. Like you look really into music. So I want to see that poor teacher's right reaction to that. Just wearing these for fashion. <laughs> I, I would love to see if that. Yeah. What? What would the? They're not plugged into anything. What? <laughs> they don't even have a cord. What are you gonna do? I, I could say the argument would be maybe maybe you can't hear as well to your yeah. education. So if that's what I would. Have, hmm. <laughs> If predators are trying to sneak up on you in the hallway. <laughs> you like in the yes, predators. exactly. Yes. Yeah. If there's a cheetah coming, you won't be able to hear it because of your headphones. They, they always tell you not to walk around on the streets with your headphones in because people can sneak up on you. But yeah. see, I like to go with the best of both worlds uh, strategy. Um, and uh, I don't actually listen to music, but I keep my headphones in because then I am aware of anyone that might be sneaking up on me. But also people won't approach me for human communication because they think I'm listening to music. I do that in the hallways at school. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to get your headphones taken. Well, in the mornings and at the end of the day, it's allowed. Oh, okay. Um, but I do that so people won't talk to me on my way into school. Yep. Yeah, and I, I, I'll, basically, any time that I'm not at work, I am I have headphones in and 99% of the time, they're just to get people to leave me alone. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, I want to keep talking about avoiding people with earphones. <laughs> um, <laughs> me too. I don't. <laughs> but, but first, uh, I think we need to check out the group text. Yeah, what's going on over there, Riley? Uh, we have a Jumbotron this week. Sydney, if you would like to take it away. All right, I'm going to tell you about it. Uh, now listen, this, uh, this is going to sound intriguing to you. 
An elf raised as a human in a place where being an elf could get you killed in a summer lark grew up thinking herself no more than a farmer's daughter. A sudden series of events led her on a search for a past she never knew she had with a motley group of friends into a world on the brink of change. The Four Kingdoms Saga by Brandon Draga is a fast-paced, high-fantasy series that fans of series like Shannara and Riera will love. Riera will love. With writing that will capture genre veterans and newcomers alike. So the ebooks start at $2.99, $2.99. That's like nothing. It's a crazy affordable price. And paperbacks start at $9.99. So you can go to Amazon or go to www.brandondraga. That's B R A N D O N D R A G A dot com and pick up a copy today. Sounds very intriguing. That sounds very like an cool. Exciting book. You can go check out very reasonable price. You get the ebook for two ninety nine. Get the paperback for nine ninety nine. Go to get Amazon. www.brandondraga.com. Go get a copy today. It's a snowy day. Do some reading. Do it. That was my favorite thing to do on a snow day. By the way, I'm sure it was. Mm. I would sit in my papazon chair. Oh no. <laughs> in my bedroom, my giant papazon chair. With a blanket and a Diet Dr. Pepper. Well, actually, probably back then it was just Dr. Pepper. Mm-hmm. You know, just a kid. What did I know? <laughs> and um, and a book. Didn't we discover on this show that there are also Mama's on Tears? Yes. And, and it's like Papa Son and Mama Son. Like it's like a Japanese mom and dad. <laughs> uh, I actually want to take a second. I love that. We were talking about our past experiences on the show. Guys, it's been one year. Oh, this is our official one year anniversary. Happy anniversary. It's our 52nd episode. It's 52 weeks. That. Well, I mean, not for me. Uh. Mm. <laughs> I wasn't here yet. Awkward. <laughs> Just pointing out the obvious that maybe wasn't. What What'd you guys get me? Get you? What'd you get me? Uh, I'm a teen. Can't do the show without me. I gave you that soda before we started recording. That doesn't count. We talked about this last week. Where's mine? I'm sorry, Tay. <laughs> and it was my birthday, too. I know. It was your birthday. I sent you presents. I sent you a vegetable spiraler. You did. You did. <laughs> that See, that's another wonderful snowy day activity. Spiral some vegetables. <laughs> <Now> cook. <laughs> <laughs> I like that because uh, the presents were all wonderful, and they all made sense together as a unit. There is the vegetable spiral and the really cool vegan cookbook and a little plant thing that hopefully I can't kill. I'll try my best, but I, I hopefully won't be able to kill it. Um, but the message that you sent repeated itself on each card multiple times. Oh, no. <laughs> just was like, happy birthday. Eat your vegetables, eat your vegetables. Happy birthday, eat your vegetables, eat your vegetables. <laughs> I can't remember it again. Yeah, they all have cards, and they're all yelling at me on my vegetables. <laughs> I didn't know about that. <laughs> it was a boy, but I loved it. No, I, I, they, they all had cards. that you sent to your sister, eat your vegetables? Yeah, it was well, a that, joke. It, it was a theme. They all had a vegetable theme. I got it. I was, but... I was trying to be supportive of your new vegan lifestyle. And I appreciate that. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> <laughs> eat your vegetables, eat your vegetables, eat your vegetables. That's so cute. <laughs> um, you said that a fun thing to do on a snow day was cook, but I will say I don't have the energy on a snow day to do anything. <laughs> of you don't have the energy on any day to do anything. Well, like that's like a rainy day or a snowy day, like where a day where you're like, oh, I need to stay inside. I just need to cuddle up with some blankets and some Netflix and some popcorn. Now, see, you have Netflix, and this is the difference, because my great joy on snow days as well as sick days was watching the TV shows that were on TV when kids weren't supposed to be home. Oh. <laughs> Which is really just, like, horrible soap operas. And, like, I was going to say, does that mean you were watching soap operas? <laughs> yeah, no, it was, like, Passions or something. <laughs> like, I can watch adult passions. TV. Oh, passions. You were watching Passions? Yeah, well, it was kind of, uh, it was because I was a big fan of Buffy the Vampire Slayer and Spike always watched Passions. I was like, well, I need to watch this. I need to be canon with Spike. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> that, was, like, that one had like magical elements, right? It did. It had like little like ventriloquist dolls that came to life and, and it had like immortal beans. It was a. I think I saw clips from it on the soup back in the day. Yeah. Um, no, I was a straight up all my children girl. 
Uh-huh. If I was, was going to watch a soap opera, you know it was going to be all my children. Hmm. I well, never you, watched soap operas. You also got to watch all the good talk shows on. Like you get to see Jerry Springer and Ricky Lake and like, uh, who's the one? Who is the lady with all the names? Sally, Jesse, Raphael. Yeah. The <laughs> lady with all the names? <laughs> no, there was a lady with a lot of names. That was it. <laughs> That's what Geraldo used to do before he tried to do news. Geraldo? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I thought you know who he is. He does yeah. news now, but he used to have a show like that. I will say on snow days, I, I catch up on the shows that I missed that were recorded. Not shows like I, that, like soap operas. <laughs> Not like magical so <laughs> I'm sorry. But like I catch up on like my Project Runway Junior. My yeah. Teen the Version. I, I do remember at some point discovering that there were occasionally, and this was back before Food Network. Um, There was a time before Food Network. I know. I know yeah. I believe. Uh, now, I, now, let me say this. I, I am not a Food Network scholar. I don't know when it became a network. I know we did not have access to it at this point. Mm. I, I'm... I don't think it was, it may have been a network, but before we had access to Food Network or like HGTV, which probably if I was going to be able to just like chill in bed and watch TV, I'd be binging those things. Mm-hmm. Um, seeing a cooking show on TV was very exciting to me because <laughs> I like cooking so shows. So here's what Sydney like, likes to do on like her snow days. <laughs> watching food be made and I'd find one and I'd be like, oh my goodness. So she likes to read read her books in her papa's on chair, watch all my children because she's a straight up all my children kind of girl, <laughs> and get really excited at cooking shows. Yeah, that sounds like a good day. I think any any day of the week. Yeah. Ah oh, man, listen to some CDs. You know, help some of that is more such. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I redecorate I could... my room on snow days. Really. Mm-hmm. Well, that's I spent like the entire day off. I was like reorganizing my things and putting new things out. Mm-hmm. Got a lot to do. You get a did, whole day at home. Did you ever venture outside? As a teen? No. No? No? As a child, uh, yes. I would always wait for dad to get home from work, which always seemed to be early on snow days, and he'd take me sledding. But didn't you ever have that, uh, like... See, I've had, I had times where I was a teenager where my friends would be like, come on, we should go outside. And yeah. so then we would kind of like ironically play in the snow <laughs> for like in your minutes. jeans and your your cardigan. Exactly. Exactly. Your cardigan. <laughs> I'm outside and it just, that was that was pretty much it. <laughs> Except you could find like a cute hat usually. Yeah. Like you could pull off a cute hat and honestly like I wore the duck boots back then. Mhm. Um but then yeah, definitely jeans and like forget I mean, I don't need a coat. It's not that cold, right? Yeah. It's just below freezing. And so yeah, like a cardigan or like a really cute sweatshirt. <laughs> and then just kind of like run around and you don't really run wanna, around? Yeah. In the snow. Like half heartedly throw snow at each other and be like, Oh my gosh. <laughs> you threw snow at me. I remember there was one day <laughs> where where we had like three days off of school because the snow was so bad. And I was with friends, and I'm actually kind of glad my friends are like they are now, and not like your friends that, that wanted to go outside and, and play in the snow, because we stayed at someone's house, and the next day we were like, oh, let's go sledding, we all brought snow clothes, and then we were just like, oh, it's cold, let's just drink some hot chocolate and watch Star Wars. <laughs> yeah. That- well, I will say that when you're a teenager, the outdoor snow fun usually lasts a very short period of time. Yeah, you like go out you, for like 10 minutes and you're like, why did I do this? I'm just cold now. <laughs> it's very cold. It's cold and wet. No, and, and of course, as you get older, especially as you have more friends that you made like through school, not necessarily the kids on your street. So you have to actually get to where they are. It's hard because driving in the snow is hard. Yeah, driving in the snow makes me nervous. Taylor, do you mm-hmm. remember the slow motion wreck I almost got us in on our way to school? <laughs> In, in high school. Oh, what? You were in the car was with that me. On that, that one windy road that led up to, uh, to the high school. Yeah. We were, I was driving and we, it was a very snowy day and the, uh, turning lane to go up the hill to our high school would always that for, it was something to do with the position of the road and the drainage. The turning lane would become a sheet of ice. Yeah. The other two lanes wouldn't, but mm-hmm. the, the right hand turn lane so that you could go up the hill was always a solid sheet of ice. So you really hoped that like you didn't get stopped on that, like that you could just kind of get over into it and 
Just kind of slide and through. Just slide through it. But there was a backup of traffic. And so I kind of edged over into it and eased on the brake and eased on harder and harder. And the car just continued to just very slowly <laughs> drift <laughs> forward towards the car stopped in front of us. And it was like really like very, it was so slow that there was no, we didn't, we didn't hit them. In, spoiler. We didn't hit them. But even if we had, there was no way anyone would have been hurt. Yeah. I mean, it would have been like a, it would like have been a like tap. A, like no, a I, wink. I think I could have gotten out of the car, ran in front of the car and physically stopped the car <laughs> like with my hands <laughs> in the amount of time but in the meantime it was both taylor and i going like ah! <laughs> there was a, like there was, there was no solution that we were seeking it was just like us both going oh! <laughs> me like standing on the brake and holding the wheel like i don't know what else to do i said that know. would help like if i stand on the brake maybe if I let the brake know i really mean it and I was thinking, like, do I turn the wheel? There's nowhere to turn there because if I turn left, I was going into tra- like into the yeah. line of traffic. If I'd gone right, there's a ditch. So, like, yeah. there was nowhere to go. It was just, like, <laughs> drift into the car in front of me. Yeah. We yeah. didn't let him, thank goodness. No. But you were very scared and just screaming the whole time. I, I still remember that like, slow motion, like, just thinking, ah, I'm going to get in so much trouble. Even though your car would probably just be like, boink. Blink, tap, yeah. and it would just like push the other car forward and it would blink the other car and then just push it forward. <laughs> but then you'd blink backwards slowly and hit the car behind you and yeah. everybody would have the tiniest scratch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, mm. No, but we would we would go outside sometimes and, and sled rarely. Um, mainly just run around and kind of throw snow at each other yeah. and think it was fun. See, the last like, time oh I went... Oh my gosh, we're so crazy. I can't believe we played in the snow. <laughs> the last time I went sledding was the last time I went sledding for a reason. Uh, because I went with Dad and it was late at night. And I didn't have school the next day and I hadn't had school that day. And we were sledding at our park and there was a very steep hill part of it. And it was like uh, the only part that was still like completely covered in snow because people had been sledding on them all day. And Dad ran into someone else and got hit in the eye and couldn't <laughs> see out of that eye. <laughs> so we left and I never went sledding again. <laughs> That's about right. Dad once, uh, he loves to tell this story when he was younger, him and his friends, and they were teenagers. I've heard this story. Uh, went to the park and got one of the big picnic tables. <laughs> yeah. to, the the legs of it were like curved, mm-hmm. like tubing, metal tubing um, that just went the whole length of it. So it was kind of like a giant sled. So you can imagine where this is headed. They like uprooted the picnic table <laughs> and rode it yep. like a sled down hills in the park um crashing it into creeks at the bottom they were in the paper there was a picture of them in the local paper that a reporter came by and was like hmm, looks like those kids are having <laughs> fun I'm, I'm gonna take a picture of that but that's a paper. story <laughs> maybe like a not- little bit of vandalism but that's okay it looks like they're having a grand old time yeah. and, and and now all of the picnic tables are bolted deep into the earth <laughs> Yeah. because of our father <laughs> you could not ride them now <laughs> riley when you were little and we would take you sledding you used to yell extreme when you would sled down the hill i remember yeah <laughs> we'd get her all set up on her sled and then let her go and she'd go extreme well, it's like i don't know why i don't know what i watched that maybe wouldn't say extreme but i know it had to have been something that you all showed me I'm sure it was Justin. I know Justin probably did it too, but I just remember on your own, you just the first time going down there going, extreme! And the hills we have aren't even that steep. They're just kind of like at a at a small angle that you just kind of slide down yeah. until the bottom and then you slowly come to a stop. So you were lying is what you're saying. I, th- I guess I thought it was pretty extreme or else I wouldn't have been yelling extreme. Now would I have? Now, winter sports were never exactly my forte. Oh, no. Yeah, no, me neither. I had those friends. It was only in high school, I think. I, I went I went skiing a couple times because I had a friend that went skiing. So I went with her. And I, I don't... The whole concept of winter sports is beyond me. Like, mm-hmm. they, they, they just... They, they're dangerous and you're going to be cold and you can burn your face with wind. Like, all of these things are just nightmarish situations for me. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I I never liked ice skating. I never liked any skating because it was hard and I have no balance. Yeah, me too. And I would fall. No. And so I, I always hated ice skating. I tried it a handful of times and just said, forget this. This is yeah. clearly not my sport. He, the, he, once again, like, it's just, here, go, go on this big, crowded, frozen 
plateau with a bunch of strangers that have razor blades on their feet and try to stay alive. I think it's a recurring nightmare when someone tries to suggest the idea of ice skating where you fall and your hands are out like to the sides of you and then someone just slides over your fingers and cuts your fingers and off. cuts all yeah. of your fingers off. Always. That's always. all I can think of. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I've never been ice skating for that reason. My friends have tried to get me to go before, and I'm like, I'm going to get my hand cut off. My, I'm not going to have any fingers when I get back. Is that still cool? Because there used to be not only like ice skating parties that people would have, but um, ice skating, that was one of the rewards we used to get in school for like, I think not getting in trouble <laughs> for at the end of every like six weeks, the different activities uh, would be planned. And one of them was like, we will take you all ice skating. It yeah. was like, uh, can I get in trouble so I can get out of that? <laughs> roller skating was our reward. And I always missed those days because I always got the reward, but I hated roller skating, so I never went. But uh, there's an ice skating rink. The closest one we have is like an hour away, I think. But during the winter, that is the thing to do for, for kids at my school. They always really? go ice skating. Uh-huh. Huh. And I have never been, and I do not have any intention of ever going because it's just a lot of falling on your butt, which hurts, and your butt gets wet. And then, like, your hands is going to get cut off, and then you just get cut <laughs> Your butt might get wet, your hand might get cut off. I don't know. I don't like it. <laughs> I think the bad outweighs the good in this situation. No, I agree. And I mean the same with skiing, though. Like, I, I think the formula for skiing, for me, it's just like, you want to get hurt pretty much right away, but not really badly, just enough to make the people who are there go like, she is incompetent and needs to stay in the lodge. And then you stay in the lodge. Because yeah. nobody ever, like, when you hear, like, oh, somebody got in a skiing accident, it's never like, and they were laid up for a day. It's always like, they died horribly. Like, yeah. it's just not a sport skiing I want to be involved in. Skiing is scary. You're going really <laughs> fast. And maybe you don't have a great, like, center of gravity. Maybe you're kind of uncoordinated. And, the and only so you just yeah. fall. The only yeah. tips anyone ever gives you are pizza, French fries. Like, what is that supposed to I, mean? Now I'm just know. hungry. I, I would, I would go pizza, down the hill. Pizza, French fries. You know, when you're like your stop. pizza is like when you point your skis inward, so it looks like a slice of pizza. And then French fries is when they're like parallel to each other. <laughs> when when yeah. you want to go, you French fry. When you want to stop, you pizza. And I would okay. just like uh, at, instantly at the top of the hill start pizza. Yeah, and that doesn't help. No, because then you just don't move. No, would no, I would still be moving. Like I'd oh, be going oh. down the hill going like pizza, pizza. <laughs> See, <laughs> I think skis. This is why I was so bad at this, because as soon as the instructor said, Now this is how you pizza, my brain went pizza and just stop me for five minutes. Pizza. Now you want a French fry, French fries. <laughs> I've been skiing once. I was in fifth grade, I went with my Girl Scouts and I would start going down like the smallest hills. I'd start French frying, and then I'd get really scared because I'd start picking up some speed, so I'd immediately go to pizza and just kind of sit there in the middle of the in the middle of the hill, and they were all at the bottom, so I just started sliding down on my butt on the edge of the hill, and then I got to go back to the lodge and drink hot chocolate. That that was always my goal, was go down once or twice so that people see, like, see, she skied, and then go back to the lodge and drink hot chocolate. Yeah. And no. they had Doritos there, too. <laughs> Doritos and I hot chocolate? Doritos and hot chocolate. It was a teenage dream. It sounds I, like it wouldn't I go hated, very well together. The worst part for me was waiting for the ski lift because I couldn't ever. This is the theme of me on skis. I can't stop. That's just me constantly. I can't, even when I'm just standing in line at the ski lift, I start, can't stop, won't stop. Someone help me stop. I, I'm sliding. I'm sliding forward into the person in front of me in line in the ski lift. And I'm just like slowly like pizzaing into this. Like, just sorry, keep sorry, saying pizzaing. So just like this slow motion vacuum has got it was. just you not able to stop. I used to like, the, the, my only hope was to just have a friend that I would like have stand in front of me and I would just lean against them. <laughs> like this will stop me. And then as they would move, I would just slide along <laughs> behind them. Oh, this I can't. I don't understand how people pizza. I don't pizza right <laughs> now. Skiing all is these, awful. All we've these boots. What we've, we've established that skiing is awful. But at least your feet are separate when you ski. Can you uh, imagine yeah. snowboarding and having your feet like attached to one place that you can't even walk? Like, yeah. how do you do that? I I don't all, all these sports that involve just making walking hard. I don't understand, and I don't want to. <laughs> No. I don't like roller skating or ice skating or skiing or snowboarding or anything of the nature. No, and I, I don't know why you want to take a sport where you don't have complete control over your feet and then, <laughs> and then put it in like cold, wet 
conditions. <laughs> it just seems like a very uncomfortable. Bad, bad combination there for anything. Yeah. Yeah. So no, glad I, we're we're also athletic. I'm glad we're all in agreement that winter sports are the worst. Hey, I, I I consider myself athletic, but I think that's that's not just athleticism. That's some sort of sadism. Like that's like that. You want to talk about real deal deal breakers? Someone talks about their love of skin. You're like, no, no. You like pain, and you are fine with putting me in situations where I might end in pain. No. <laughs> and you want to be cold while you do it? Absolutely not. <laughs> And I and I'm wearing these giant ski pants. <laughs> you now, you want to see me ugly, cold, and in pain? Absolutely not. <laughs> and I, this huge puffy jacket. And I am not a I am not a person who looks good in a beanie. Like my face just looks. I look like a little kid. I always look like uh, uncomfortably young when I put on mm-hmm. like when there's like a scarf. You just look like me. And well, <laughs> but it looks weird because I'm not. I'm I'm clearly old, and so it's like a really unsettling effect i think when you squish my face between a scarf and a hat and you can't see anything you can't see my ears and it's just like this squishy little round what (laughs) squishy little round that's a nice face the scarf and a hat i have seen you in your winter gear and yeah i've seen you in your hat and your scarf and uh i'm just gonna help you out here with this you you look (laughs) fine you look like sydney in a hat and a scarf no magical transformation takes place well because i cannot see your ears i assume you are like an ageless horror you're fine i I think i look like a very a very unsettling cross between a baby and a grown-up like a baby (laughs) face on a grown-up body like imagine you're looking at an adult and you like start at their feet and you look all the way up and you're like "Uh uh-huh uh-huh that's an an adult that's an adult i understand this situation that you use the face you're like baby what <laughs> what what happened that's what i look like in ski wear uh i will say i just remembered the only part i liked about the ski trip other than being in the lodge and drinking hot chocolate was, <laughs> was uh tubing where you just like get in a big like like you know like a big tube yeah an inner and then tube. you go yeah like an inner tube and then you just go down the bumpy hill i could get on board with that yeah that's fun the part that's not fun is dragging the tube like back up to the top of the hill but like when you're going down the bottom like you're on your butt like you can't do anything wrong you just kind of slide down and go on some bumps and it's fun times i i see and i get that like yeah you're so cold but you're like hey i'm sitting down i'm in like a big thing that's somewhat gonna protect me like what, what person said hey this is fun but you know it'll be more fun let me try to do it standing up and with like put all of my breakable limbs exposed not in a safe bundle like no <laughs> but that's where, that's where i think we can all agree like sledding is probably something that we should especially taylor you and i because riley you're still young enough that you can ironically sled yeah <laughs> if you want true. to as a teenager you could go and be like oh my gosh can you believe this I'm not even sledding. I mean, I am, but like, it's, I'm not, do, I'm not really into what I'm doing. I'm just like not even here. Like, I'm not, I'm not even scared. Like, wait, you know, I'm um, not even sledding. Hashtag okay, sledding, I, think, I guess. I think we should I mean, take advantage of the fact that our bodies will still allow us to sled. Cause we're going to miss that someday. If it's like, oh, my knees, I can't sled. We're going to miss that. <laughs> now, I, now you can't say that because our father. Oh, yeah, I was going to say no we are. Sleds. <laughs> We and have our so father's DNA. In opportunity. <laughs> that, that has that's like Batman. He has no cartilage in his joints. He will still do anything. <laughs> that is true. You know, if given the opportunity, Dad be like, "I'll sled. I'll, I'll do it." Give no, me, I would give me a sled. Where is it? I would sled. I would sled if there was alcohol involved, which I realize makes things more Ooh. dangerous, but it also that makes things more, bad. more fun. <laughs> Don't listen to Taylor, kids. Oh, absolutely never. Absolutely not. Never. About anything. Well, sisters, thank you. Uh, I've got some great ideas for what to do now when it snows again. And certainly it will. Stay inside. Hide from the cold people. (laughs) Stay inside where my jeans make sense. (laughs) Um, Well, thank you. Thank you for joining me again. Thank you all for listening. I hope you enjoy that champagne powder. (laughs) Sweet, sweet champagne powder. Take a gander at that champagne powder and stay inside and watch some HGTV. Yeah, you you, you go out. No, go out and play in those mashed potatoes as much as you want. (laughs) And uh, if you'd like to join our Facebook group, it's at Still Buffering. Uh, If you want to tweet at us, at Still Buff. If you want to email us, you can go to MaximumFun.org forward slash Still Buffering. That's the name of our show. That's not right. That's not right. <laughs> I made Try that again, up. Sydney. 
<laughs> I just <laughs> I combined two things I was going to tell you to do. How about this? I'll I don't ever you. listen to if you, you doing the outro, but now I have to. If you want to email us, go to stillbuffering at maximumfun.org. There you go. If you want a jumbotron there from go. us, go to maximumfun.org forward slash jumbotron. I got it right this time. There, there, there that is. Uh, <laughs> if you can also go to maximumfun.org and check out a lot of other wonderful podcasts and shows that are part of our network. I would highly recommend you do. Um, and outside of our network, another great podcast that talking about our father made me think about is Court Appointed. Yeah. That's our dad and our Uncle Michael who do uh, Scampy fun. Scampy Mike. Scampy Mike who do fun yep. uh, legal, crazy legal trivia and laws and funny things <laughs> having to do with legal matters. So Yeah. Smattering of dad jokes. And dad jokes. So <laughs> lots of those. No cartilage, but lots of dad jokes. <laughs> We just came up with a new catchphrase for them. Court appointed, no cartilage, but lots of dad jokes. So, so check that out. Um, and uh, thank you to the novellas for our theme song, Baby Change Your Mind. This has been Still Buffering, a sister's guide to teens through the ages. I am Riley Smurl. I'm Sydney McElroy. And I'm Taylor Smurl. I am a teenager. And I was two. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Don't drink and play in the snow. Mugs, shirts, stickers, patches, tanks, and more are yours for the purchasing at maxfunstore.com. Hey, you already love the podcasts, so why not take this to the next level and outfit your home and bod with our merch? Maxfunstore.com. Because if you have to wear a shirt, it should be one of ours. Maximumfun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Listener supported.